So there has been a lot of discussion recently at CLSI, the Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute, about the uh, appropriateness of the current susceptibility breakpoints for phosphomycin and the fact that uh, glucose 6-phosphate is used during in vitro susceptibility testing. However, um, most likely G6P or glucose 6-phosphate is not actually found in the urine. So there are some concerns whether um, our in vitro testing actually reflects uh, what is happening in vivo in a patient. Currently, there are no susceptibility breakpoints from CLSI um, specific to Pseudomonas aeruginosa for phosphomycin. So in the clinic, what is happening is um, if this drug is tested, the E. coli breakpoints are being extrapolated to other organisms that we don't have breakpoints for. So we thought it was important to look at activity of phosphomycin against Pseudomonas um, and extrapolate those breakpoints to see exactly how active um, the drug looks according to the E. coli breakpoints. So the main takeaways from our research um, were um, we were comparing the four or four different susceptibility testing methods. Um, the reference method, um, which Betsy stated, was the auger dilution, and then we also looked at disc diffusion, um, e-test, and then broth microdilution. And um, the clinical isolate set that we used was slightly skewed to be more resistant. About 50% of our isolates were multi-drug resistant, and about 20% were pain-resistant isolates. And um, when we compared the susceptibilities, about across all four methods, there were about 50% susceptible, but the MIC is varied widely across um, all four methods, ranging from less than two all the way up to greater than 1024. Betsy mentioned that current practice or current recommendations per CLSI for like disc diffusion and e-test are to um, ignore the inner colonies that are frequently or potentially can be frequently seen in um, disc diffusion and e-test, and so we. We kind of wanted to look and see how those MICs compared to the parent strains, and so we actually subcultured those out and then ran the same MIC tests using Roth microdilution and compared the parent MICs to the daughter MICs and found in each case that the daughter strains were a lot higher in terms of MICs when compared to the parent strains. Uh, future research avenues for this project are to, again, continue, we're, we're building on the isolate set that we've been testing, and we have isolates from the U.S., and we also have some Australian collaborators, and so we're, we're now adding into um, our isolate set so that we have an international set of isolates to continue looking at activity of phosphomycin against Pseudomonas. And then uh, we also, as Elizabeth mentioned, we are looking at the frequency of inner colonies that are seen there. Um, and so for the isolates that we have subcultured, the daughter um, mutant isolates, we are now going to look at those with whole genome sequencing and assess the uh, resistance mechanisms of both the parent strains and the daughter isolates. So kind of to try to understand uh, what are the resistance mechanisms uh, leading to either um, non-susceptibility or resistance for um, pseudomonas.